But it's kingdom restoration and recovery. That's our theme for this new year. We went through a lot in 2020, and God wants to recover us. And he wants us to put us in a, in a position where we return to his desire for us. Amen? And so today's topic, I know you were looking at it and you're saying, what is that? But today's topic is getting out of Shittim. Getting out of Shittim. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, say, get out of Shittim. Now, I know some of you are wondering, well, Pastor Dave, what in the world is Shittim? Well, I want to assure you that Shittim is a place in the Bible. And um, this is a very, very important and significant place. And in the book of Micah, God actually, it's so important that God actually had a prophet write down for the Israelites about Shittim. Some people call it Shittim. So, this is, here's what the prophet says to the children of Israel. It says, my people, everybody say my people. My people means you. It says, my people remember what Balak, king of, Moses, king of Moab, counseled and what Balaam, son of Bear, answered. So Balak was a foreign king and he actually was trying to destroy Israel. And so he solicited the services of his prophet, who was a sorcerer, a diviner. And he said to him, he said, I want you to curse the people of Israel because I'm afraid of them and I don't want them to come into my area and take over my area. So this is the backdrop for that situation. And so God tells the prophet to tell the people of Israel, which by extension is us, the lesson of Shittim. So he says, remember from Shittim to Gilgal. Everybody say, remember Shittim. Now, why does he want you to remember Shittim? He wants you to remember Shittim because it says, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. So something must have happened significantly in Shittim that God would say, I want you to remember this. This is a very important thing for you to remember. Shittim or Shittim is a real place in the Bible. It is a significant place for the people of God. And there are some tremendous lessons I want to share with you about Shittim. God said to the children of Israel, he says, remember what happened in Shittim. Say that with me. Say, remember what happened in Shittim. Shittim. So he said, remember what happened in Shittim. Shittim was the last place the Israelites stayed before they entered Gilgal. Gilgal is the first point of the promised land. So Shittim is the last place before the promised land. And while they were there, some things happened, some interesting things happened. Everybody say problem in Shittim. Shittim. There was a problem in Shittim. What was the problem of Shittim? The problem in Shittim was that the people ended up wondering. They ended up wondering. They ended up losing their way, so to speak. And the story goes like this, as I began to share a little bit earlier, Balak, who was the Moabite king, he feared Israel and he summoned Balaam to curse them. He tried to curse them, so Balaam was summoned by the king, who would, Balaam is a, is a, is a false prophet and uh, he's a sorcerer, and he, he was hired to curse Israel. But in his attempt to curse Israel, he couldn't curse Israel. And you say, well, why he couldn't curse Israel? Because God stopped him. And God said, you can't curse who I bless. 
So instead of cursing them, after several attempts, what Balaam told, told, told uh, Balak and he told the rest of the people, he said, you don't have to curse them. All you have to do is get them engaged in sin and they'll destroy themselves. Everybody say problem in Shittim. In Numbers chapter 22, verse 6, it says, it says, Therefore, please come at once, curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's fee. So they had their fee in hand. They had cash. They said, we go into the prophet and we are going to pay him to curse Israel. So they had their fee in hand. It says, and they came to Balaam and spoke, and spoke to him the words of Balak. But guess what happened? After they gave the money to Balaam, and so now they think this curse is on. After they gave the money to Balaam, Balaam set out on a journey to go and curse Israel. But along the way, God stopped him. And sometimes there are some people who are ready to curse you. If not for God, they would have cursed you, but God stopped them. Everybody say, thank God for stopping somebody. God stopped some people. There were some people who had your demise written out in a book, and God said, nope, you can't touch that one. Who I bless, you can't curse. And so God said to Balaam, he said, you shall not go with them. And you shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So God is saying, you know, you're trying to curse them, but you can't curse them. I bless them. These are my people. These people can't be cursed. How can you curse God people? And you know, one of the problems that we have is nobody can curse us, but we can curse ourselves. You see, when you are a part of the kingdom of God, you are actually unstoppable. No one can touch you, but you can destroy yourself. It says, so Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, go back to your land for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. So Balak said, look, I'm not going with y'all. The Lord has refused permission. But then they came back again and they came back three times. And so Balaam tried to go with them. And, and, and when he tried to go with them, an interesting thing happened. And some of us, we, we remember the scripture in the Bible, but we don't know exactly the details of it. But it says, he went on his donkey, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, and she lay down under Balaam. Can you imagine that? So he's riding along on the donkey, riding along on the donkey, and then the donkey stopped because the donkey saw the angel. And the angel was sent from the God. And the angel was, was sent there to say, you can't curse my people. So the donkey lay down. So now he's saying, now this is my donkey I've been riding all this time. I don't know what kind of herb this donkey been smoking, but you don't lay down on me. So he got up. It says his anger was arise, and he struck the donkey with the staff. So he started beating the donkey. It says, then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. So he started beating the donkey and the donkey started talking. <laughs> now I know if you see a donkey talking, you know it's, it's a serious time. But you see, he was so blind based upon this assignment that they wanted him to carry out. He wasn't paying attention. Something was going on. He should have figured out, man, if the donkey started talking to me, something going on here. Let me figure out what it is. Because God had just spoken to him and said, look, don't go to my people. So he didn't connect the dots between the donkey and what God said. So God had to connect it for him. It says, then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? <laughs> Everybody say a donkey spoke. Sometimes it takes a donkey or someone you consider a donkey to get you in the right spot. Sometimes God, sometimes God opens the mouth of a donkey to fix you, to get you back on track. 
And so it says that um, after this incident, the Lord opens opens Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel that the donkey was running from, that the donkey was afraid of. And he said, oh, okay, man, now I understand it. Now I, God, now I understand it. You know, I'm trying to go against you, but I can't do that because you bless these people. I can't curse these people. So this is what Balaam ended, ended up saying. Balaam, as you know, is, the, is, the, is a sorcerer. So he ended up saying this. He said, he said this is what he said to, to King Balak. He said, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? Let me tell you something. Nobody can curse you if God bless you. I don't care what your situation is, where you come from. The blessing of the Lord is upon you and nobody can stop it. You are unstoppable. Amen. We are really an unstoppable people. That's why Jesus would call us the light of the world. He said, man, you, 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 you are the salt of the earth. So in other words, you are not capable of being defeated by any element in the world. Are you with me? And if God curse you, I mean, if God bless you, nobody can curse you. So Balaam couldn't curse the people. But what he did, after they kept after him, they went after him several times, and they said, man, please come. He said, he said, you know what? You don't have to curse them. If you want to destroy them, if you want to defeat them, what you do is you get them involved in immorality and idol worship. And when you think about it, when we think about our lives as believers, you know, a lot of us, we are not destroyed by people cursing us. We are not destroyed by, you know, evil people against us. We are destroyed when we start wondering. Not wondering, wondering. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And it says, how Balaam answered that the only way to injure thee was by tempting, tempting thee into idolatry, idolatry and whoredom. So he said, the only way you can injure these people, the only way you can harm these people because they are blessed by God is to get them into something that God didn't authorize them to get into. Anybody with me? Now, last week I talked about Lodabar, and I want to just quickly go through some things about Lodabar, and then we're going to get to the meat of our message today. You see, Lodabar and Shittim are two places that we are not supposed to be in the Bible. So you need to come out of Lodabar, and you need to stay out of Shittim. Lodabar was a place that's called um, No Pasture. No word, no communication. It's like a, a, a ghetto, a physical ghetto, a spiritual ghetto. It's like a place where nothing grows, nothing is fruitful. You know, some people live in Lodabar, they spend their whole life and nothing seems to work. 50 years later, they're in the same position. You know, when I look at my life and, and, and being on the streets, and I look back at some of the guys who I grew up with, and I say, you know what? I understand what Lodabar means because these guys, nothing has changed. It's, I mean, it's the same position. The only thing that's really changed is that things have gotten worse for them. But they stuck in that. So Lodabar was this town in Israel. But as we know, God pulled Mephibosheth out of Lodabar. And he, he gave him a new direction in life. He, he actually took him from Lodabar, which is the hood, on, onto the king's table. So we have to stay out of Lodabar, but we have to get out of Shittim. Amen? Tell the person next to you and say, get out of Shittim. Now, Shittim is known as the place of wanderings. It's known as the place of wanderings because this is one of the places where God's people, the children of Israel, wandered about unnecessarily. 
And here's the very important thing about shittim. Shittim is very close to freedom. Very close. You see, Shittim was the last place that the Israelites were before they entered the promised land. So freedom is very close. And if you can stay focused, freedom will come quickly. But if you start wondering, a one-week journey could take 40 years. Are you with me? Anybody know what I'm talking about today? You see, if you don't have a plan to get out of Shittim, you will delay or derail your God-given destiny. God has a destiny for you. God has an announced spot for you. He has, a, he has somewhere for you to go. God told the children of Israel, he said, man, go into the, I have this place for you. I have this place prepared for you. This is the promised land. This is your destiny. But their own actions derailed or delayed their destiny. Can you imagine it? You, you have a, you, you a, a two-week journey and it takes you 40 years. And it's all because of wondering. Are you with me? So I want to give you some lessons for, for Shatim. Let me, let me show you what happened with Shatim. So for example, this is the journey. God said, you are going to the promised land. And this is how you get to the promised land. You walk on a straight line. And you get there. So you go into the promised land. You're singing, we go into the promised land. But you know what happened to the Israelites? They started out on the journey. And they say, you know, we go into the promised land. We go into the promised land. Boy, look that girl over there. Look good now. Let me see. Um, you know, let me go over here. Uh, but man, this, this, this is a good thing, you know, man. Man, I'm I having, I having a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We going to the promised land, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, boy, hey, true and we going to the promised land, you know. And then you come back and you say, um, now where was I? Uh, because, you know, sin can blind you and confuse you. So you start out here and you're supposed to go there, but you end up behind here. Are you with me? And so now you come back on track and you, 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 sometimes when you get into sin, you forget who you are. And so you start going in the wrong direction. So he told them to go that way, and they're going this way now, wondering. So the journey is taking longer. And so then a prophet comes along, something happens, and then they get back on track. And then they go wondering again. And you would figure, well, at some point in time, they should have learned, but... The way we are as people, sometimes we don't learn. You ever heard that saying that say some people learn the hard way? The hard way is the rough way to learn. Because in learning the hard way, you could lose your life. Are you with me? So here's the first lesson. Don't go back to what God delivered you from. Very important lesson. Don't go back to what God delivered you from. You see, when God takes you out of something, don't go back there. Everybody say, stay out, stay out of Shittim. Don't go back to things you were delivered from. And you see, that's what, the, that's what Balaam tried to do. He tried to get them back into things that God had delivered them from. And when they got back into things that, that God had delivered them from, they ended up in Shittim. Are you with me? It says... Don't go back and visit what you came out of. Now, I'm going I'm to share a story with you. This is a true story. I'm not calling any names or anything. So, you know, um, you may figure out who it is, but whatever, you know. But, but this story is important for, for what, I'm, what I'm sharing with you today. There was a pastor that I know. In fact, one of his friends was my friend. Was my friend. And this pastor, he... Grew up as a troubled young person. He was in all kinds of problems. He was a drug dealer. He did all kinds of things. And God saved him and he was doing great. He had an international ministry. He was well liked. He was well respected. But he went back to visit what he came out of. And you see, it, it wasn't just a matter of a mistake. 
according to my friend who's his friend. Because my friend said to me, he said, you know, I figured out something was wrong when this pastor said to me, well, you can't go with me on this run. And where was this run going? This run was going to Las Vegas to hook up with some prostitutes and use drugs. And you are God's representative. And, and what, what unfortunately happened to that pastor is he died of an overdose of drugs. Don't go back to what God delivered you from. If God delivered you from something, don't even visit it. Because if you visit it, you could end up wondering. You can derail your destiny or you can delay your destiny. Is anybody with me today? Anybody understand what I'm talking about? I know this is a funny word today, but this is the word that the Lord gave me. Amen? So, you know, if, if it hurts you, just say, ouch. Numbers chapter 31, verse 16, it says, look. These women caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation. So what the scripture is telling us that Balaam counseled the Moabites how to deal with the Israelites. And they use women, they use whoredom to distract them to the point where they were so off track and they got into sin that God sent a plague among them. And, and you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I used to debate it in my mind. I said, does God really send plagues among people? Well, it's in the Bible. Now, we are living under a dispensation, so judgment doesn't happen the same way as it used to happen in the, in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, you fool around too much, God sent a plague. And 24,000 of them got killed. And they still didn't get out shittim. Are you with me? Here's something else I want you to remember. Your journey will be longer and more difficult if you stay in Shittim, tell the person next to you, say, say, get out of Shittim. Your journey will be longer. You see, um, a 10-day journey can take you 40 years. And here's the other problem. Recovering from Shittim is a long process. Let me tell you something. If you ever go back into what you've been into, recovering from it, it's more difficult than when you first got there. You know, I had another friend who had um, recovered from cocaine. And uh, somewhere along the line, he got involved with a woman. And you know, it's, it, what's interesting for men is that if you understand the devil's methodology, the easiest way for the devil to get you is a woman. And so here it was, this guy, you know, was a church leader and he's doing different things. And um, he hooked up with a woman. And when he hooked up with the woman, the woman had some cocaine. And he got back into cocaine and he ended up losing his life. Are you with me? This is a serious word today. I want you to remember this. Amen? You see, getting back on track after you've gotten back into something that God delivered you from, is more difficult than getting out the first place. Getting out the first time is hard, but if you get re-entangled, it's even harder than before. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? Anybody understand what I'm saying? That's why I stay out of Shittim. I ain't going back. If I visit, it's to help somebody, not to hang out. Are you with me? Shittim is also a place of self-destruction. You see, in Shittim, you don't, your enemies don't destroy you, you destroy yourself. It's a place where you destroy yourself. Can you imagine destroying yourself? I mean, God has blessed you, God has put you in a position to win, and here it is that you are destroying yourself. 
You, 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 you know, I mean, the devil doesn't even have to do any work. You're doing his work for him. It's one thing to have the devil against you. It's another thing for you to be against yourself. Some people are their own worst enemy. And the reason that you are your own worst enemy is because what God said. God said, remember what had happened in Shittim. If you don't remember what happened, you end up in the same place. Are you with me? Anybody know what I'm talking about today? You're looking at me funny, man. Are you receiving? Yes. Amen. Let me tell you why I say that. Because what happened to Israel is happening to the church. Because the church is the type of Israel. So what's happening today is that we have church leaders doing the same stuff. Let me tell you something. The problem with the church and the effectiveness of the church is not what the devil is doing. The problem with the church is what we are doing to ourselves. Are you with me? You know, you have church leaders going with people in the choir, doing all kinds of, of, of dirty deeds, and then getting up and say, I represent God. And the people know what you did. You see, we are unstoppable unless we stop ourselves. And what the church is doing globally is the church is destroying itself. You know, I saw an article the other day, and it was a sad article because it was a very famous church that we all, many of us, know about. And it started to explain what was happening in that church. The pastor was fired because he was in an adulterous relationship. And then when they investigated more, they found out he, that he was spending millions of dollars and, and, and that wasn't the only person that, that he was going with. Can you imagine that? That's called shittim. You have to stop doing shittim. <laughs> I didn't curse. <laughs> Anybody understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all got to stay with me, man. Just stay with me. This is the word I got, all right? This is the word I got. You see, the problem with Shittim is that you end up going in circles. So what happened to the Israelites is that they took one step forward, two steps back. If you want to move forward, you got to stop wondering. You got to get back on course. Don't live in circles. A lot of people, they live in circles. You know, they come to church every week and they're repenting for the same thing they did, they, they did the week before. At some point in time, you need to say, look, I am putting my face like flint and I am walking this road and I'm going to follow the word of God. You know what I've decided in my life? I'm decided, I decided till I die, I represent the most high. Till I dizzle, I will never fizzle. I'm on a road and I ain't going back. The only time you return to Shittim is to rescue or help someone. That's the only time you return. You see, Shittim is the place before freedom. So if you get to freedom, you don't go back. You stay away from there unless you are pulling somebody else into, into freedom. Are you with me? You know, I made the mistake of trying to return. I remember, you know, I got saved and, <clears throat> and, and I experienced this new life. But the only friends I had were the guys on the streets. So you know what I did? I went back to the streets. I didn't participate in what they were participating in. But I was there because they were, this was familiarity. And some of us, we end up back in, in, in Shittim out of familiarity. It's the only place of comfort we know. And so here I was hanging with these guys. I'm not doing what they're doing. And then after a while, I realized, you know what? If I stay here, I'm going to end up back where I was. So I had to run for the border. And then when I returned, you know what I did? When I returned... I only return to help. And let me tell you something else about returning to help. Don't return to help 
alone trying to help a group. Okay, this is a very important principle. Do not return to try, don't go back to Shittim to help somebody and you're trying to help a group of people because the group will overwhelm you. You know, what I, you know what I found? I remember when I went back to try to help, whenever it was a group, they used to gang me. Not physically. They gang up on me in terms of, you know, questioning me and so on and arguing with me. But you know, one-on-one, -on -one, every last one of them say, man, you know, David B., you did a good thing. And they wanted help in different ways. Not everybody received help. And I was able to help them one by one. That's a very important principle. You see, if you stay there, it will drag you down and sap your strength. Here's the next lesson from Shittim. Anything you put in front of God is an idol. Very important. Anything you put in front of God is an idol. And sometimes we don't realize that we involve in idol worship. What's the first command? Anybody know what the first command is? What is the first command? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But you see, when you're in Shittim, you forget who God is. So here's what happened. They began to get involved in idol worship. And sometimes we're involved in idol worship and we don't even know what the idol is. So in Shittim, what happened was that they got caught up with these women and these women had other gods, and so they started dabbling with the other gods along with their God. So what God was saying and why God sent the plague is God said, look, you know, you said you'll put no other gods before me, but so who are these gods that are, that are showing up? In your life, let me ask you a question. Which other gods are showing up be before God? God is supposed to be first. And sometimes we put other things before God. Be careful what you put before God. You know, some people, they put a political party before God. The political party could get them out for any event, get them involved in anything, and get their money and get their service and they get their time. But when it comes to God, God is second place. You could, they can't make it to church, but they could make it to the rally. And I don't know if you figured it out yet, but all of these rallies and stuff that y'all go into, life ain't getting no better. You might as well trust in God one time. Put God first. I'm not saying you can't be involved with a political, political party, but if you're involved in a political party and that takes the place of God, it's called an idol. The same thing with a sorority or fraternity. Some people put their... their, their, their frat brothers and their sorority sisters ahead of their Christian brothers and sisters. And they put their whole situation above God. They, they have more allegiance to their fraternity than they do to their church or to God. Are you with me? Don't put idols before God. Some people put habits before God. Some people put money before God. They say it's so important for them to make money that, that, that they, forget, they, they forget the principles that God said to operate by and they compromise. And then they start wondering and they're trying to figure out, well, how did I end up in this position? You know, there are a lot of rich people who thought that they could make it off of money. But those same rich people ended up being miserable and lost. You know why? Because money don't satisfy you. Money is just an accessory. It's not essence. And then some people put pleasure ahead of God. Amen? Now here's the thing I want you to remember. If you get out of Shittim, freedom is the next step. And does anybody want to be free? Anybody likes freedom? You like freedom? Man, I like being free. And let me tell you something. God freed me. I'm a free person today. I'm a free person because I got out and I didn't go back. And I'm not going back. Amen? I'm on this road and I know what got me to my destiny. I am not going back. Anybody in here, you're not going back? You don't plan on going back? Don't turn back. Amen? You see, here's what happened. What happens when you get out. Now, the interesting thing about freedom is that 
Shittim was a, a place of forgetting. So you start forgetting a lot. You, you forgot God. You, you, you made mistakes. You did all kinds of things. And the prophet Micah said, I want you to remember what happened in Shittim. And so he reminded the Israelites. And God says, don't forget what happened in that place that you were. Don't forget what happened in Shittim. Let it be a lesson. The lesson is, it takes a lot longer to get to your destiny if you wander in Shittim. Unfaithfulness to, to the covenant causes wanderings. When you are not faithful to the covenant of God, it causes you to wonder. You know, some people, you may be trying to figure out, well, why is my life so complicated right now? I, maybe you've been wondering. Maybe you've been distracted. Maybe you are free and you went back. Are you with me? You see, in, in, in Shittim, God was substituted for Baal. Baal is a fake God, not the real God. He's a representative of Satan. You've heard of Baal worship, right? So in, in, in Shittim, they substituted Jehovah for Baal. And there are some people in the world today who are in the church, and they have substituted Jehovah God for Baal or Mammon. But if you want to be free, you have to get your priorities in order. So let's get ready to wrap up. Shittim is the last stop before the promised land. And you see, when they were in Shittim, they had manna. But let me tell you something about manna. Manna is wandering food. It's not your real food. And so God supplies you while you're wandering in the wilderness. When you get to freedom, God says, grow your own food. That's why we have the backyard farming thing. You see, um, you now become responsible for your journey. So now when you achieve freedom, you have to follow the principles that God gave you to success. God said, now you grow your own food. You, take your, you, you handle your responsibilities. When you get out of Shittim, you're supposed to learn how to be responsible permanently. Not on a, not on a here or there basis. You, are, you have to learn how to be responsible permanently. So I want to leave you with these important lessons from Shittim. Number one is obedience. Obedience is essential. The Bible says it's better to obey than sacrifice. A lot of us, we want to say we love God and not do what he said. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, man, you say you love me, but you don't do what I said. So in other words, you say you love me, but you are not obedient. If you love God, then you'll do what he says. You'll obey him. Am I right or wrong about that? Am I, am I saying something that's unreasonable? Is it unreasonable to do what he says if you say you love him? Well, why don't we do it? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? We know this, but yet we don't do it. He tells us what we're supposed to do. He tells us what, what we can do, what we can do. And then we go and do something else and say, we love you. In the Bahamas, they'll say, stop from joking. Are you with me? Number two. Understand where and why. Now, what do I mean by that? You have to understand where you are and why you're there. You see, the Israelites didn't understand where they were. They were one step from freedom. And they didn't understand why they were there. You know why they were there? They were there to learn discipline, to learn order, to learn how to follow God so when they got to freedom, there's no problem. But they didn't understand where they were and why they were there. And some of us in this place today, we don't understand where we are and why we're here. You don't even understand why you're why, why you serving God. We are not serving God to get points. We are serving God because this is the essence of life. In him we live and move and have our being. You see, this isn't something I do, this is me. You know, a job is what I do, but that's not me. A business is what I do, but that's not me. A church is what I do, but that's not me. I am a kingdom citizen. I am a follower of the Most High. 
And that's what got me to where I am today and that's what I will be until I die. Are you with me? So you have to understand where you are. And I know where I am today. We are in a hostile world that's trying to do the same thing what happened in Shittim. They're trying to distract us. They're trying to get us involved in putting things before God so that we can be effective. You see, if I can get you involved in politics or race, you know, and the big thing nowadays, and it's, you know, it's, it's very important to, to clarify some of these issues. And I'm not saying the issues aren't important, but there are people now who are putting race before God. So they're saying, well, you know, I'm black or white, and that's more important than being a child of God. No, 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 no. Black or white is a secondary issue because skin color is really an irrelevant thing. Skin color has no information, no knowledge. It's just an inanimate object. And furthermore, none of us had anything to do with our skin color. So you can't really uh, um, give yourself any props for skin color. You didn't decide it. There's not one person in the world I can remember who decided to be white or black. Unless you're doing like how they, they, how, how they do today now where the guys say, I feel like a woman. I feel like I'm white. I feel like I'm black. No, no, you, no matter how you feel, whatever you're born is, is, is what you are. Focus on your assignment. What happened in Shittim is that they got distracted from their assignment. What is our assignment? And does anybody know what our assignment is? Let me tell you what our assignment is. We are ambassadors. Ambassadors represent a foreign country and another country. We are on earth as ambassadors to our family, to our friends, our community, and we are here to reconcile them to the kingdom of God and, let, and get them to understand the, the principles of the kingdom so their lives can be better and our lives can be better. Are you with me? And then we need to have commitment to his cause. You know, there are a lot of causes out there. There are a lot of causes out there in the world today. There are a lot of things you can get behind. All kinds of cause, causes. But let me tell you something. You have to understand what is your cause and put your cause as a priority. If you put another cause before God, that's called an idol. And God doesn't really like idols. And it's gonna cause you some problems. You say, how do I know it's gonna cause me problems? Well, just look at what happened in Shittim. They put idols before God. 24 people, 24,000 people died in one day. Are you with me? I want you to stand together. And the next thing that, the next lesson from Shittim is this. You have to have a good memory. Because if you forget what happened in Shittim, it will repeat the process. You see, if you forget what happened when you disobeyed God, then you will disobey him again. That's why he said, remember what happened in Shittim. In Shittim, they took a long time it wasn't the full 40 years because they would, had gone through several different deserts. But they, they, it took a lot longer for them to get to freedom because of the mistakes they made. So God says, remember what happened. Let me ask you a question today. How many of you all remember what happened in your shittim? If you don't remember, go back and remember and decide that you are not going back. Touch the person next to you say, I ain't going back. That's right, never going back. Let me tell you something. Good things happen when you get out of Shittim. Good things start to happen. Let me tell you what, let me tell you what happened to me. You know, uh, um, today I'm blessed. I have a family. You know, my, my life is good. And it's all because I got out of that. I got out of that mess. Amen. And as we know, there are testimonies all over this place of people who got out. And when you get out, you have to stay out. Amen? When they got out of, uh, out of Shittim and they went into Gilgal, 
It says they built an altar of stones. An altar of stones means this is a place to remind me of where I came from and where I am today. And sometimes you need an altar. An altar is a place of remembrance. You remember what God did for you and you say, man, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to remember what happened so I don't repeat the past. And they also celebrated the Passover. First Peter chapter 3 verse 10 says this. He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit or guile. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Say this with me. Say it's time to get out of Shittim. <laughs> 